So now let's focus on the analysis of the KD tree. One quick observation that we can make here is that the, the running time for answering a query is exactly proportional to the number of leaves that visit inside each tree. To see this, observe that um, when I call this query on a node V, I don't have any any loops or any uh, anything other than just recursion calls. So this takes constant time. So the first step is of one. Ignoring this these procedure calls that I'm gonna analyze right now. Ignoring these procedure calls, everything is constant time. So everything outside these boxes is O of constant. Okay. So now let's analyze these boxes essentially. So these two procedures call report subtree. But they basically mean is that you want to report all the points inside a subtree. Okay. Um, but obviously the number of the time it takes to explore the subtree is O of K, where K is the number of leaves in the subtree. Right? If you have a binary tree with K leaves, then uh, its size is O of K. So therefore you could charge the time it takes to visit all the nodes inside the subtree to the output size. So essentially these parts come for free. And so these are all charged to the output size. What about these two procedure calls? Well, this is just a recursive call on the left child or the right child. Essentially, they can be translated to visiting the left child or visiting the right child, right? So which again can be charged to the number of nodes visited in the in the tree itself. So basically, we can see that the query time is proportional to the number of nodes visited, which is equivalent to the number of regions intersected by the query region R, because we only visit um, a node if we intersect the query region. Okay? So that's the only that's the that's the only thing that we need to count how many regions we do insert, intersect. That actually helps us to simplify the analysis of the query region. We can assume that it, uh, we only need to count the number of regions intersecting by a vert intersected by a vertical line. Why is that? Um, it's actually kind of easy to see. When we look at this query rectangle, this query rectangle can be formed by taking four lines, two vertical and two horizontal. And since KD trees are essentially symmetric between horizontal line and vertical lines because we don't do anything in partic that particular to vertical or horizontal lines, and we keep switching between vertical splits and horizontal splits. The analysis of a horizontal line is exactly equal to the analysis of vertical line. Okay, so the number of regions intersected by horizontal lines and the vertical lines in the worst case are basically the same. And um, if I have a bound on the worst case number of regions intersected by a vertical line then four times that is a number of regions, is an upper bound for the number of regions intersected by the rectangle. Note that in that case, I will be counting some extra things. I will be counting some region that intersect, let's say this vertical line over here, which I don't have to count because I'm just, I'm just interested in anything that intersect this rectangle. But I'm only over counting by a constant factor, essentially. Right? So um, I'm a bit being pessimistic, but in fact, it only changes the constant constant factors in my approximation. Um, another consequence is that uh, this analysis can be generalized to any query shape that can that is made by a constant number of uh, horizontal or vertical lines. You know, in other words, if your query looks like this, this analysis applies again because the number of regions intersected by such a query can be bounded by a constant number of lines that you can draw through this shape. Okay, so this analysis is a very general analysis that can be applied to any shape of constant size, constant complexity. Okay, so therefore it only we look at only a vertical line. How do we bound this? Um, there is many different ways to actually do this bounding. One of them is to say that. Um, Okay, let's look at a vertical splitting line. A vertical splitting line doesn't change how many uh, 
regions intersect only horizontal one does so therefore uh, you get this this recursion but maybe the easiest way of seeing this recursion is doing something like this um, imagine that I want to build the KD tree but instead of building the KD tree one step at a time I'm building it two step at a time right so this is the first step and this is the second step okay so now I could think of the process of building a KD tree as doing a horizontal division then a vertical division okay so think of these two steps as just one action okay? these these together divide the plane into four regions one two three four okay? and then this continues right so in the next step the same thing happens inside each one of these regions okay so I can think of the KD tree the process of building the KD tree as repeating this four division after another and then I don't have any more if statements right it's just the same step that is being done over and over again and now I can make one interesting observation here any vertical line or horizontal line can intersect at the most two of these four regions so for example this vertical line can intersect at or two either one or one one three two three or two four this horizontal line can intersect one two or three four okay there is no way to draw a horizontal or a vertical line that can intersect three of them so therefore when i look at the recursion that 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 um, bounds the the region that i intersect by a vertical or horizontal line i always get this recursion okay because um, each one of these regions have roughly a quarter of the points left and out of these four regions I intersect two of them so I have four regions that's I intersect two out of four so that's the two here and then I have a recursion into two of the subproblems doesn't matter which one it's either one two one three two three two four etc it will always at most two okay. so therefore this is the recursion for how many regions a horizontal or vertical line segment can intersect and if you know your master theorem you will know that this recursion easily solves to n uh, square root n one easy way of seeing this is that um, 2 is square root of 4 right so if you assume that um, or let me do it this way if you bound if you look at the recursion tree the recursion tree has height log n because at every step the number of points halves but the number of regions intersecting the line doubles every two um, two recursion levels so here you have one you have two then two more levels you have four because of this thing so therefore the total number of in region that intersect is going to be two to the log n over two Right, and this is two to the log n is n, so therefore this is n to the one half over square root n. Yeah, so that's kind of an easy way of solving this recursion. So that means that uh, uh, we're actually done with the um, analysis. Every vertical or horizontal line intersects like square root n regions, so therefore the query time is square root n plus k because the square root n is the number of regions that visit. The main thing about a KD tree is that it uses linear space and it's a very space efficient data structure. It is much less efficient and, uh, in the query time, but it is much more efficient in the space. For comparison, if you use a range tree, you would get n log n space here, which is could be a bit too much, but on the other hand, the query time will be log squared n and it can be improved to log n as well.